welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about the planet of Toril and where it exists in the galaxy or the universe. It's not actually called that in D&D, but when you watch the video, you'll find out. So the maps that I'm going to reference in this video, I got from a forum called the Piazza from a guy named Argent Mantle, who put them up to help people run the Spelljammer campaign, which is a campaign in D&D that takes place in these galactical settings. It's really, really incredible work. I can't wait to show you guys. He did really, really good, just like Sebastian and killed the Faerun map. This guy's killing the galactical game. Before we get started, I want to say thank you to a recent patron, Kit. Kit, this video goes out to you, man. I really, really appreciate what you did. You helped motivate me tonight for sure. Now, this video is a little bit more freestyle. Actually, it's completely freestyle because I couldn't find any artwork to make the traditional videos that I make, so I just had to wing it with the map. So hopefully you guys still enjoy it. There's a lot of cool information here. Let's get right into it. Welcome to a map of the realm space. I know it looks a little confusing and that's probably because it is, but hopefully I can break it down in a more simplistic way. So if you're walking around in Baldur's Gate 3 and you just happen to look up at the sky, you might actually know what's going on up there. And Larian Studios might also reference some of what we go over, considering that we're dealing with races such as the Mind Flayers, which aren't originally from the planet of Toril, and the Githyanki and more. So it might be a good idea to have a understanding of what's actually going on with the realm space and the other crystal spheres that are out there now we have to first point out that we are dealing with the prime material plane in this video and what that means is in dungeons and dragons there are different planes of existence for example when you start the game we're going to be in avernus which is in the uppermost layer of the nine hells and the nine hells is in a different plane of existence than the planet of toril so everything that we see on the maps here today that i'm showing you is only in the prime material plane. You're not going to see the nine hells or anything like that. Everything that you see, you could actually get to without having to travel through a different dimension. I can't guarantee that you'll be able to actually get to everything because it's hard to reach some of these areas, but you certainly don't have to travel through a different dimension to get there. Now, the first thing that we're going to go over are the crystal spheres, which are the D&D version of our galaxies, I guess you could say. A crystal sphere is a giant spherical shell that contains an entire planetary system inside. And the shell of the sphere is made up of a mysterious dark ceramic material that's basically impossible to damage by any means that you or I would know how to do. And that goes for magical or non-magical means. You just can't damage it. Basically, that's it. Now, if we're looking at the realm space here, you can see that I have the map up on two screens. It's kind of confusing. You can see this white circle going around right here. And this is basically the shell of the crystal sphere known as the realm space. So everything within is the planets and all of that stuff which make up the realm space. And over here to the right, we have a circle that's outlined by yellow. And that's basically just a blown up zoomed in version of the innermost circle over here. I'll show you guys right now so you can see how cool the map is. If we go over here, you can notice the sun, and then you see the planet of Toril. Now, if we go over to the actual view of the crystal sphere, and we zoom in, you can see the sun and the planet of Toril right here. So that's just a zoomed in version of the innermost circle because these spheres are just extremely large. Now, there are other crystal spheres out there. There are actually many of them, and I do have maps of a couple more. I have a map of the Crin space, as well as gray space. We're going to on the realm space and the planet of Toril, of course, but these other crystal spheres do play an importance in Dungeons and Dragons, and they might actually play a part in Baldur's Gate 3, I'm not really sure. Now, all the space that's in between each crystal sphere is known as phlogiston, which is a rainbow-colored chaotic gas material, and is sometimes called the rainbow ocean. So all of this outside of the circle is the rainbow ocean if we look actually down here in the bottom right this is a bunch this is kind of like a quick map of a bunch of crystal spheres you can see the realm space is in the center right here on this one all this in between is known as phlogiston we're just going to call it the rainbow ocean and it's this really rainbow i'm sure it's actually really cool to see it if we ever got to see it in a video game a really chaotic gas material that's highly flammable as well so it's really dangerous and if you want to travel out here you really have to be prepared and have the right ship and have the right knowledge the rainbow ocean also varies in density and it has these river-like flow currents um, within it that actually connect different objects to each other which includes crystal spheres and if we look here in the bottom right i don't think my camera's in the way if i pull it over you can see a bunch of crystal spheres here 
and you see a triangle. And what this triangle is signifying is a flow of the rainbow ocean. And this can be used to travel from one crystal sphere to another. You have to go with the flow to get there and you take something called a spell jammer ship. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but it's really cool how all this stuff works like it did in the spell jammer campaign in Dungeons and Dragons. So you would take a spell jammer ship outside of this crystal sphere and follow the flow and it would take you I, I don't know i don't know the exact times but maybe 15 days to get to crin space but if you wanted to go to gray space you would actually have to follow it and go to crin space first and then gray space so gray space would take 20 25 days don't mark me on those numbers i'm not sure if that's correct so the reason why I showed you the crin space and the gray space is exactly that because this current in the rainbow ocean connects them all and this is actually a trade route believe it or not it's really cool to think about this stuff it would be so cool to see a spell jammer ship come into Faerun near Baldur's Gate and bring some trade materials I don't think we're actually going to see that but something to think about so if we zoom back out I'm going to repeat a couple things quickly we have the white sphere right here which is the crystal sphere called the realm space within the realm space is the planetary system and this is the zoomed in planetary system right here and outside of this is called the phlogiston or the rainbow ocean now the area within the crystal sphere all of this in here is known as wild space which is like a vacuum so as you distance yourself from a planet the air gets thinner and it turns into a vacuum basically now if we zoom in here so you guys can actually see how cool this map is let's take a look at the planet of toril you notice that in this crystal sphere the center is actually a sun and everything rotates around the sun and right here we have the closest planet to the sun is known as anadia which is a really hot planet i'm sure you could guess but there's actually life on anadia on the poles of the planet the the equator is actually like 70 to 80 percent of the planet and it's too hot to live but on the poles there's a bunch of halfling colonies that's about as much as i know of it but it sounds pretty cool i would love to learn more about that a little halfling planet living on the poles a bunch of santa clauses I don't know, it's cool stuff. The second planet from the sun in this Terillion solar system is called Koliar, which is more of an air type planet. It's actually home to the lizard folk as well as the Aarakocra race. So if either of those races make it into Baldur's Gate 3, which will be really, really cool, then you'll have an idea as to where they're from. Now, the third planet from the sun is the famous planet of Toril. And if you guys remember, I talked about Abir Toril in a previous video. Abir is the twin planet of Toril, but it exists in a pocket dimension, which is why you are not seeing it on the map right here. And Toril is the home of Faerun, which is where the Sword Coast is in Baldur's Gate. I can't see, I'm not sure if that's Faerun right there. It's hard to tell on an actual sphere as opposed to a flat map. And Toril actually has a natural moon called Saloon. And those of you that are good with D&D lore know that there is a goddess named Saloon as well, the goddess of the moon. And she is going to be referenced in Baldur's Gate 3, for we saw a temple of Saloon that was taken over by the cult of the Absolute. So you guys actually can see her moon, I guess you could say, and her tears of Saloon, which are the asteroids that fly in this area. Now, I don't want to go over all of the planets. One, because I lack the knowledge, and two, it will take forever. But let's see how far Toril is away from the sun. So we got the sun right here. We got Toril on this line, and that brings us up to 200 million miles away, which is pretty far. But if we look at the realm space as a whole, you got the sun right here. There's the planet of Toril. If we go to the edge of the sphere, it's 3,200 million miles away. All right, let's take a look at the Crin space sphere. And the total size of that from the sun, the radius, is actually... 4,000 million miles, so it's larger than the realm space. And while we're here, let's take a look at the planets real quick in the Kryn space. And the third planet from the sun is the planet of Kryn, which is where the famed city of Greyhawk is. All right, then we have one more crystal sphere we're going to take a look at, which is the gray space. And you can tell that it's much larger than both the Kryn space and the realm space. And it's actually from the center, which actually isn't the sun, it's actually the planet of Earth. It is... Wow, 8,000 million miles in radius. That's crazy. That's really, really big. And in the gray space, you can see the center is a planet called Earth, which is the Dragonlance setting campaign for Dungeons and Dragons. I think I'm pronouncing it right, Earth. I think there's like three ways to pronounce it. Maybe I nailed one of them. I don't really know. So yeah, so that's what you guys got there. 
and we're back at the realm space this is really cool stuff hopefully i was articulate enough articulate figures i mess up when i'm talking about that hopefully i said everything well enough for you guys to understand and at least get an idea as to what's going on with the solar systems up in the air in Baldur's Gate 3. And in future videos, guys, we're going to break down even more stuff. So I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.